Hello everybody, this is Brooke aka Supernatural Simmer 34 and today we are back at it with another create a sim. So today's create a sim is a girl named Kimberly who is an eco-activist in the 70s. She wasn't originally going to be from the 70s which you might be able to tell from the first everyday outfit I'm going to put her in because it doesn't look like it's from that time. I decided to go for a 70s vibe because of her hair and her shoes though and the messy braids she ends up with definitely gave me hippie vibes and the shoes which are my favorite shoes in the game by the way um def also gave me hippie vibes i didn't develop kimberly's personality too much when making her beyond like a peace loving gardener i think she would probably live in oasis springs despite her outfits not being super great for warmer weather i don't think i just think that she would really like the mid-century modern vibes in oasis springs and so do i Honestly, Oasis Springs and Strangerville are two of my favorite worlds to live in for some reason. It's a little baffling to me because in real life, I do not like hot weather. Um, I mean, I don't like cold weather either, but I deal with cold weather better than hot weather because I grew up and I still live in Michigan. My mom, on the other hand, doesn't do so well with cold weather because she spent the first couple years of her life in Texas and she also spent summers there. I think my ideal weather is spring weather, weather, where it's about 60 degrees out and sunny with like a slight wind. The only d downside to it being that weather all the time, aside from the catastrophic effects of the earth not having seasons, is that it'd never be warm enough for outdoor swimming. Like I said earlier, I grew up in Michigan, so I grew up going to our lakes in the summer and swimming, and I don't know how happy I'd be to never be able to do that again. My family actually owns a cabin on Lake Michigan, or my stepdad's family does, but we go there every summer. For the past several years, we've br brought friends on the trip, and that's made it even more fun. The best days are the days after a storm, where the waves are like taller than your head, which honestly doesn't take much considering the fact that I'm 5 foot and my best friend is 4'11". The only thing I don't like about those days is the small chance of a riptide, but it's kind of been instilled in me since like... I was very small that if you find yourself being sucked out then swim sideways not towards shore i'm sure it's like that with every kid who grew up going to the great lakes or the ocean um i'm not a super great swimmer though despite my love for it so i don't know what i'd do if i found myself a ways away from the shore i mean obviously i would swim back but i'd probably be out of breath and on the verge of a panic attack because i don't like deep water very much uh this might be surprising or maybe not but i actually I actually have a really bad fear of the ocean. Not the Great Lakes, except for maybe Superior, but I haven't been there in years. But I have a big fear of the ocean. I don't know why I'm scared of one and not the other, but it would probably partially be because the ocean is a lot more dangerous than the lakes. Um, there aren't many venomous or poisonous things in the lake, and there certainly aren't very many things that could eat a human, but the first time I ever went to the ocean, I actually couldn't even swim in it if I wanted to because it was filled with flesh-eating bacteria. The beach was closed. Like, Lake Michigan would never. Um, there is one thing in freshwater lakes that I don't enjoy very much, uh, and that's the possibility of a bull shark. I remember when I was 11 or so, I read about bull sharks and I was terrified. Um, if you don't know, a bull shark is a shark that can survive in freshwater and has been known to swim up the Mississippi River, which I... Eight. I don't generally have a problem with sharks. In fact, I think they're actually really cool, but I've never actually, I've never really been able to shake my fear of bull sharks simply because they can live in the sort of water I grew up swimming in. I actually do have a favorite shark, even though I'm generally impartial to them, and it's the whale shark. Um, and if you know anything about me or you know me in real life, you know exactly why the whale shark is my favorite shark, and it's because it's literally called a whale shark, and whales are my favorite marine animals. Obviously, I know that whale sharks aren't whales, but I've always had a soft spot for giant animals, and the whale shark is the largest shark. Uh, for example, my favorite land animal is the elephant, and my favorite marine animal is a sperm whale, and my favorite flying animal is the Californian condor, which, if you don't know, is the flying bird with the largest wingspan in North America. I also read about Californian condors when I was pretty young. It was in an American Chillers book, and I'm not sure how popular those were in other states, because the author is actually from Michigan, so it was really popular here. Um, but anyways, I read it in the American Chillers book, Creepy Condors from California. And in that book, their size was really exaggerated. For so, so for a little while, I was kind of scared of them. 
But once I found out that they couldn't pick up and take home an eight-year-old for dinner, I started to like them a lot more. Everyone I know thinks that they're really ugly, and like, obviously they kind of are, but that's never really stopped me from liking animals before. For example, my favorite prehistoric animal is something called a platybelodon, and everyone I've ever met thinks that they're hideous. I, personally, think that they're adorable. Um, anyway, we are coming up on the end of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you all soon!